Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Art of Safe Scumming, and today we're going to be covering molder armies. I said that we're going to do a series of molder armies after my last video, and this is the quintessential molder army. This is Throt the Uncleans army. So this is what you should be aiming for in your mid to late game armies. You're going to build this throughout the course of your campaign. And to run through it really quick, I'll show you the composition, and then I'll show you what I've done to it after the battle so you can get an idea of what and how this was done. So we've got, obviously, Throt. He's currently at level 49. We'll run through his skills after. We've got Gorich, two Packmasters, and the Packmasters are there for a reduction of upkeep. And then we have a Warlock Engineer to extend the movement range of the entire army, followed by a whole bunch of Brute Horrors. These were summoned using the uh, Flesh Laboratory, and they were all given a variety of traits, but the most important trait is that cellular instability here. They all have cellular instability. So we're going up against the stack of Cathay. It is an ambush battle. And the other thing I want to add while we're waiting for it to load is that this army is a little less refined than the other ones that I'm going to show you because this one was recruited on the move. I did not sit and wait for a building to mature to be able to get these brood horrors. As soon as they became available in the flesh laboratory, I recruited them into Throt's army and gave them the traits that I wanted. It's really important if you want to have a strong Throt campaign because Throt needs to be moving constantly on the campaign map. Now, this is a good mix uh, because we have some anti-large enemies here. We have a bunch of missiles. We have some cav, and we have some artillery, as well as some other anti-large stuff. So what we're going to do here for our anti-large guys is we're actually going to sit, stick Gorich and Throt right there. And then we're going to take our two Packmasters right here, and they're actually going to summon all these units here and throw them into the artillery. And then the rest of our army here is just going to rush right in there. And we'll double it up. We'll put it on the sides there. And then our Warlock Engineer is just going to sit over here and cast them as necessary. So first things first, we'll go ahead and summon these units. So there should be a total of four Wolf Rats. We'll select all those Wolf Rats after they're done, run them in into the artillery. We'll then take Throt and this guy and send them over here. We'll send these guys in like that and these guys in like this. And we just want them to mesh with the infantry. We don't really want to... Uh, to give them any attack orders right now, we just want to selectively start popping these cellular instabilities here whenever we see somebody in a good position to do that. And that is going to take out a whole bunch of infantry. Now we have a couple guys that are wounded. We want to make sure we get those out of there. And we probably should have separated them out. We have a few characters, or uh, excuse me, brood hoarders, that are uh, inherently damaged from the onset of the battle because of some of the traits that they were given. And then we're going to go into Throt here, give him his, uh, his anti-large. And where is Gorich? We're going to make sure he has all his buffs here. Go ahead and dilute those attacks a little bit. Let's see. Let's clean up some of these uh, infantry. We should be in pretty good shape here. Make sure none of our dudes are dying. Yeah, get that guy out of there. And the beauty of this army is you want to defeat the army quickly, the enemy army that is, defeat the enemy army quickly, and then let your guys sit because brood horrors innately regenerate. So we're not going to be able to do anything about these guys here. Uh, we can go ahead and keep them from moving and doing any more damage to us. Um, with that Warlock Engineer. We didn't have to use really any of his summons. What is this guy doing? So let's go ahead and run that in there. That guy does not have one. We'll get a couple of these guys to attack this Lord. Boom. More Menace below there. What do we got going over here? Oh, that's, that's Cav. We've got an Anti-Large there. This we can go ahead and pop down there. We got some spells coming in from the enemy there. Uh, these guys are still sitting there. How are we doing over here? It looks like Gorich and Throt are doing okay. Um, they are just kind of derped out. And we've got some recovery. Go ahead and pop that. Um, let's see here. Where? What is still remaining? Oh, it's these guys here. And they should be done soon. We can also dilute this with Throt's guys and Gorch needs to get out of there because he does not regenerate we can finish running these guys down pop some more uh, menace belows 
put this one right like that. And we should have this pretty much cleaned up now. These guys can also get in on this fight if they want. Let's see here. Let's pop one of these, have them go after that. Okay, what are we missing? So we've got the army losses. Yep, army losses. So now we're going to select which of our guys that needs healed. So Gorge definitely needs healed. Uh, Throt comes with two heals. So we're going to go ahead and pop that on Gorge and see how that does. And then the rest of these guys that are damaged, we're going to keep an eye on them. And we're not going to pursue th these, uh, these enemies. In fact, what I would say is we're literally going to put this on fast forward. The last units to leave the battlefield are going to be these ones here and we're going to let them just go we're not going to hit end battle or anything because if you look here uh, that unit is healing the only one that will be incapable of making it to max healing is this brood horror right here and we're going to wait for throts next heal because gorich is going to need it gorich again does not heal innately but the rest of this army will heal by itself and actually Let's see if we can keep them. Did I screw that up? Might have screwed that up. Clan rats. Yeah. I took too long to pop that because I wasn't paying attention. It may not make it all the way through all of his heals. It did. Barely. And of course, we have zero losses. And actually, I would classify this army as recovered from where it started. Again, there are a few of these that have no uh, recovery, post-battle recovery, because of how uh, their traits came. Again, these were recruited off of the Flesh Laboratory, so you cannot control the traits that they come with but you have the advantage of being able to summon them free at a whim. So this army is toast. And we'll go ahead and uh, we're not going to get any replenishment out of it. We'll go ahead and take the money because we need it anyway. So for anybody who isn't tracking who hasn't played Throt, to give you an idea, uh, you use your growth juice to get... Uh, a certain percentage on your growth fat. And then right like this, currently we are at the level of 800 plus to give us the Brood Horror. We do not want to fight another battle because that will give us Mutant Rat Ogres. You can argue that the Mutant Rat Ogres are, are just as good, but they do not innately regenerate. And yes, they have less armor, but they're much faster. So I go ahead and hit that. And in this instance, we have two Brood Horrors, so we could easily recruit those now. So let's go ahead and look at Throt's line here. We're going to go ahead and get Mentor for that 50th point. I usually run down this line initially, and then as soon as these skills become available, we go ahead and start popping those for the purposes of getting all of this sorted out. And then we have um, Molder Knowledge, right? And Mutagenic Elixirs here. And that gives us, uh, you know, physical resistance and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And to get there, you have to put in a couple points in one of these uh, other skill sections. And I use Blastmaster because periodically, depending on how damaged your army is, you may want to throw in a little bit of uh, rattling gun or something like that or some mortars. Poison wind mortars work well with this if you don't want to go completely unranged. You can throw in some poison wind mortars into this army and and that will definitely help. But uh, as far as that is concerned, that's basically how that is set up. We've also made him very good at fighting as far as Throtto is concerned. And he's obviously on his brute horror mount. So the whole army, except for Gorich and the uh, Warlock Engineer uh, are on Brute Horrors. Now, the Warlock Engineer, basically, you're going to run through all your skills in your Warlock Engineer. I prefer to go um, increase mobility and then run down their... Uh, I run down this one here. 
because it increases your trade tariffs, but then you're just looking at your spells. So basically, if I was doing it, I would start putting points here, and then I put some points here to get to a Howling Work Gale so that you can stop those uh, flying units. And then I start concentrating on this, and then I run down the rest of his spells. And as you can see, that's what that looks like. Now, on to these pack masters here. One of my pack masters I have set up at Fletch Snatcher because it enables replenishment for your army. And it also inhibits uh, the. Uh, Re, re, it inhibits the replenishment rate of the enemy in the local province. So that is useful. But the thing that we're really going for here is your upkeep reduction, recruit rank, and then here, uh, leadership and casualty replenishment rate for this entire army because we're running brood horrors, right? All of that makes sense. And then if you uh, look at Gorich, we have him in there as just just a strong entity, as well as he is a uh, is a campaign map uh, agent as well. So I'm going to next run down specialists so I can use him in some of these, but then the rest of these are going to get filled out because once you fill out some of these skills, he's basically... Uh, it, Except for missile damage, he's basically indestructible. So that's how that looks. And if you look at all of these uh, brood horrors here, if we go to Throt's army, uh, you can see that they have a variety of different skills in the Flesh Laboratory. The best combination that I have found is you give the cellular instability, and that's going to reduce your casualty replenishment rate by 10%, and that's going to hurt you. That's going to end up giving you it, it, situations where you don't have fully healed brute horrors like this going into battles. And then if you can balance it with this, then you not only get a upkeep reduction, but you end up with a net 5% increase in casualty replenishment rate. The only problem with that is if you do this, you are likely, that one didn't happen, but sometimes you're gonna get that instability, right like that. And then you can recycle this unit and try again, but oftentimes uh, you can get just two skills on the, uh, on the unit, two augmentations, excuse me, on the unit, and that will help you uh, keep that army healthy. The only exception to that is this one right here. Casualty replenishment rate minus 100%. There's nothing that you can do to keep this unit from eventually dying from the inability to replenish, except for maybe use the molder stone or do what I did at the end of that battle to keep it healthy. Other than that, you're not going to get any post-battle replenishment. So anyway, this is, again, the quintessential Molder Army. I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you have different thoughts about what to run with Throt, then sound off in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, we'll see you on another video here at The Art of Saves coming.